Hi, and welcome to this do-it-yourself video where we're going to look at how to build a USB-based NES game card player. USB NES is an easy way to play and back up Nintendo NES cartridges on modern computers. It turns the NES cart into a standard USB flash drive. You can manage the battery back game save files. It works on PC, Mac, Linux, and on modern smartphones. The firmware is USB upgradable for future proofing. Visit usbnes.com for more info. The first thing you'll need for this project is the USB NES Lite Parts Kit, which is available through our website via an online web store link. You'll also be needing the USB NES 3D print model available through our website and film and 3D printer if you were planning on printing out your own USB NES case, which I highly recommend and we'll go through that later in the tutorial. You'll need a fine tipped soldering iron, plus a station, plus solder, solder wick, which is optional, a magnifying glass and third hand circuit board holder, this is optional, flat tipped or electronics tweezers, lineman's pliers or needle nose pliers, number one Phillips screwdriver, utility knife, intermittent soldering skills, and some patience because this is probably going to take about an hour of time to completely assemble. Let's open up the USB NES parts kit and see what's in there. Inside the protective jewel case we will find one STM32 barebones system blue pill board pre-programmed with the current USB NES firmware one 40-pin single inline header, one 4-pin single inline header, one 6-pin dual inline header, one thin jumper wire, one printed circuit board USB NES 01, one 72-pin NES cart connector, one surface mount 10K ohm resistor, one surface mount P-channel power MOSFET, one surface mount level shifter, one three foot micro USB cord, four number 440 one inch machine screws, and two number 440 by 11 sixteenths machine screws. All right, let's prep our pin headers. Break the 40 pin header into two equal sections of 20 pins. Use pliers to straighten the 4 pin header. Use pliers again to slide the 4 pin header spacer down to be equal to that of the other 20 pin ones. Remove and discard the two yellow jumpers from the 6 pin header. Okay, let's get the blue pill board prepped now. Remove and discard R4 from the board with the soldering iron by heating both sides of the surface mount resistor and pushing it away from the other components. Tin one end of the thin jumper wire that came with the kit. Use the thin jumper wire to bridge R4. Cut the excess wire off neatly with a knife and optionally apply some extra solder on the four mounting holes for the micro USB header to improve structural integrity. Now let's prep the USB NES board with the surface mount parts. Place a small amount of solder on a single pad within the parts footprint. Use the tweezers to place the part on top of the board oriented with the footprint hold it steady. Heat the soldered pad with the soldering iron while pressing the part against the board until the lead from the part makes a good bond with the solder. Solder the rest of the leads of the part to the pads. Repeat this process for all three surface mount parts. 
Use a magnifying glass to inspect for good solder joints and identify any solder bridges on the surface compounds, especially on the 5 lead level shifter chip. Use solder whip to clean up any bridges or excess solder. Now let's stuff part of the USB NES board. Stuff the two 20 pin and 6 pin headers long side up into the top side through holes of the blue pill footprint. Make sure the header spacers are flush with the surface of the board. Repeat all these same steps for the 4 pin header afterwards. Use pliers or other means when inserting tight Okay, let's get the blue pill soldered up here. Place the blue pill on top of the headers with the USB port facing upwards and press it flat against the header spacers. Solder all the pin header joints to the blue pill. Flip the board around and apply solder in the four corners of the blue pill footprint. Keep the blue pills as flat as possible against the main board. Solder the rest of the pins to the main board. Now let's deal with that 72 pin connector. Carefully line up the pins on the cart connector to the through hole footprint on the top of the board and push it in flush with the board. Flip the board over and solder the pins on all four corners of the connector to the board while pinching the connector flush against the board from the other side. Solder the rest of the connector pins to the board. Now time to test the USB NES. Plug the micro USB cable into the blue pill and the other end into a computer. A red LED should light up on the blue pill. This indicates the USB is supplying 5 volts to the blue pill. A green LED should momentarily light up. This indicates the firmware's attempt to detect an NES cartridge. A removable storage media device should now show up on your computer. The removable storage device should have readable files like readme.txt, version.txt, and report.txt in the root directory, as well as rom.nes if a cartridge is attached. Open the rom.nes file on your computer's NES emulator to run it. Do not remove or insert NES cartridges when the green LED is on. Changing NES game cart media usually involves unplugging the USB connection from the computer first. But sometimes the reset button can be used to invoke an NES cart media reset on the host computer.
Now it's time to download and print the USB NES Lite 3D models. So through usbnes.com we will be able to download the, uh, the print package and open it on our computer as a 7-zip file. There are five models in the package and an alternate bottom model is provided. Use your favorite slicer to organize the models as you see fit for your film and printer. Print all five models, top, middle, bottom, dust cover hinge, and reset button. Use a 5% ink bill for all prints. Set top bottom walls to 1.2 millimeters. And for PLA plastic, use 220 degrees Celsius to get the best results on the fine detailed lettering on the first print layer. Use a 52 to 55 degrees Celsius print bed temperature to minimize print warping and curling. A confined printing enclosure is recommended for best results. And this model does not require supports to print, so might as well turn that off. Once you're done with the settings, go ahead and save your G-code file and load it up on your printer. Now for the last step, assemble the USB NES case. Use your knife to cut away any excess plastic around the hinges of the dust cover. Cut away any debris on the sides of the interlocking parts. Wipe any fine strings away on the PLA. Carefully pop the dust covered door into the bottom piece by positioning the door hinges on top of the flat back rockers and pressing in. Adjust the door hinge so its angle is flush with the bottom piece, or relatively close. Place the reset button through the hole of the top piece print from the bottom. Pop the fully assembled USB NES board into the middle piece print. Pop the bottom of the middle assembly into the bottom assembly. Watch the bottom posts of the middle assembly align with the whole cutaway for the back rockers on the bottom piece. Sandwich the top and bottom assemblies together. Use the four one-inch screws to fasten the three layers together using the holes closest to the NES cart slot. Do not, in, do not over torque these screws. Use the two 11 16 screws to fasten the layers together using holes closest to the front of the unit. Do not over to torque these screws and do not over thread them because they're very close to the uh, surface of the unit so if you over torque it it's likely they're going to uh, pop out there so. And that's it! You've just built yourself your own USB NES. I just want to thank everybody for watching this video and I want to let everyone know that there's going to be more videos like this on this channel so stay tuned I've got a lot of projects and things I'm working on and uh, if you liked my video uh, why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you like my work and want to support what I'm doing uh, just head over to my website and uh, visit my uh, eShop and maybe consider making a purchase, you know, every little bit helps, so... Shift your bits with USB NES Lite today.